Welcome back everybody to Jay Hunto's Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to change a water pump on one of these Ecotec engines, 2.2 or 2.4 liter, with an added benefit of having the engine out of the car. Look out! If you've got a Haynes manual on your HHR, your Cobalt, whatever for your 2.2 or 2.4 liter Ecotec, just know that the water pump does not look like this. This is a conventional style that's on the outside front of the engine usually. Uh, if the water pump shaft bearings fail, there may be a howling sound at the pump while it's running. That can definitely uh, be the case, but there's no way to check that without taking it off. All water pumps, uh, in rare cases on high mileage vehicles, another sign of water pump failure may be the presence of coolant in the engine oil. That could happen because this is where your water pump starts. How this is where your water pump housing is. This is engine oil all through here that lubricates the chain. So there's a seal that separates these two. So if that goes bad, you're either going to get oil in your water or water in the oil. Chapter 3, Section 8 is your water pump replacement. You will need a special tool to keep this in place. I've done it without that. I'm going to see if I can do it again without it. Otherwise, I'll have to improvise to keep the sprocket in time with the timing chain because this is chain driven. So you'll want to make sure that that stays in place. So here's your uh, warnings you got to start with. The engine must be completely cool before beginning this procedure. Then disconnect your battery cable and then it tells you everything to take off. You got to remove the front wheel on the passenger side. Remove the plug. You drain the coolant. Remove the plug from the bottom of the water pump housing. That is this right here which you will see from getting under the car. You're going to have a uh, connection point here where the transmission bolts up and there's something else that bolts on here and I can't really recall what it is but it's fairly easy to get to this. It's a 13 millimeter. Take that bolt out and drain the coolant out of here. There's a tra coolant transfer tube that goes back this way to the thermostat housing. So that's just sealed in there with O-rings and uh, you'll have to loosen your thermostat housing to get enough room to move this and get it removed. Now this book tells you uh, to remove a lot of uh, things off the engine before you can get this water pump off like the exhaust heat shield. Uh, electrical connector at the engine coolant temp can remove the catalytic converter I don't think you need to do all that three bolts securing the thermostat housing you will have to do that just to get the coolant transfer tube out specials okay here's a special holding tool part number EN 43651 available from specialty tool manufacturers tool can be fabricated if necessary lock the tool carefully not allowing any sprocket movement the bolts this is just to keep the gear from jumping a tooth on the chain. That occurs behind this plate. All right, so with the plate removed, you can see the, the locking tool will get bolted into these two holes and then bolt into the sprocket to keep it uh, stationary while you remove the water pump. And then you're gonna take out this this bolt and this bolt which are both 13 millimeter all the other bolts are on the back side this one this one and that should be it okay these two these two bolts are out and these two bolts are out this is loose now now you've got these three 10 millimeter bolts in the front that have to come out 
and you gotta make sure that sprocket doesn't turn. Okay, I've taken the bolts out. I've attached this plate with a longer 10 millimeter bolt that's gonna hold that sprocket, which will allow the water pump to be removed. Here's the rear view of the timing cover where the water pump actually attaches. And so we have the ever popular unboxing of parts. Here we've got a new, not rebuilt water pump from AutoZone. Not sure if that's the part number or not. From GMB. This does not look like a rebuilt unit and I'm happy about that. Most importantly, it's got a metal impeller here instead of plastic. The O-ring and an O-ring that goes on the back side for the rear of the housing. So this will sit there and a set of instructions which again doesn't apply to this vehicle since ours is front wheel drive and it's on the back. This is kind of generic. So you're going to remove these bolts back here in order to get the plate off. This part comes right off. See this one's got some corrosion going on in here. Nope. So this housing just gets transferred right over to the new one along with a new o-ring seal. If there's any corrosion in here you want to get it out. You don't want any of that. Going back in the coolant system. Make sure this is fully seated because these these edges here are sharp and they will cut it. And uh, you want to put a little bit of oil on these before you put it to the new mating surface. And make sure that the uh, mating surface on your new pump is. Uh, free of any debris or anything, just want to make sure everything's cleaned off. A little bit of oil on your finger will do it. Doesn't have to be a lot. This gasket's got a little nub sticking out right there. Shouldn't be a problem. A little bit of oil back on. Like so, make sure it spins. There's a sleeve here that acts as a guide that you'll have to tap that down with. And when you don't use tools that way, <laughs> that's fully seated. Now you just put your bolts back in ones that came out now the bolts these go back into will have threads so you're obviously not going to put a bolt in here because that goes all the way through same that should be it so it should be one two three four five bolts you got to put back
air cleaner. FYI, when you pull the drain plug, coolant's going to come out all over the place. Just make sure you're prepared or have a funnel. Now you're going to have to move your thermostat housing also, which is down there, the largest radiator hose in the top goes right to it and uh, connects to it so there's I believe three 10 millimeter bolts on the back well let's see let's walk over here and look at our example there's three 10 millimeter bolts for the thermostat housing so you just take these out move this to the side and then that tube will come out of the uh, back of the water pump it goes directly across here just a coolant transfer tube. Okay, there are three bolts for the thermostat housing. These two short ones go in the top. This long one goes in the bottom. If you decide to tackle this job yourself, this is going to be your view through most of the repair. As you can see, I've got the cover off the timing cover here for, to get access to the water pump pulley on the inside there's three 10 millimeter bolts you can barely see one of them and that's where you put that special tool so you've also got to get this bolt out here of the cover and there's one way up there that uh, you might be able to get to a little easier from the top it's uh, the only 13 millimeter bolt in that area you're seeing there. Not fun. The other two bolts are on the back of the water pump. Here's that 13 millimeter bolt. Much easier from the top. Okay, back underneath. In order to get these bolts out, you're going to need a 3 8 inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket deep well. That's the only thing that fits in there and allows you to pull the ratchet back out but just get them loose take them out by hand keeping in mind you don't want that that sprocket to turn on the chain that it's on or fall down into the uh, timing cover so we gotta find a way to keep that from happening okay don't try this at home folks but I have all three bolts out of the gear that connects to the water pump pulley and I'm using the plate with a screw through it going into the gear to hold it there. So when I take the uh, water pump off of the back, hopefully it'll stay there. There's a special tool for this and I recommend using it. So don't try this at home. Okay, so the water pump is out. This is the one I just took out of the car. This is the one, the new one that's going back in. Now, when you get this part, it's going to have, it's going to come like this without this plate, which is this plate. I've already taken the plate off of this and the O-ring and transferred it to the new pump. I'm just going to go ahead and take the screws out of the old one and put it into the new cover or the cover that I transferred to the new pump rather. Here's a good example of why to use anti-seize. See some of these bolts look fine, some of them don't. Use your anti-seize in steel bolts going into aluminum threads. Okay once you've got the water pump in you're gonna have to align the screws in here for the, or the holes rather, for the timing gear and also the holes in the water pump. That's going to be a little difficult to do. So I use this long 10 millimeter bolt and a ratchet on the crank bolt. And I pulled the spark plug so I could turn it easy. And I just 
use that bolt, pull away the, the gear just a little bit from the water pump, and I turn the engine until the holes are lined up. They're lined up now. So I'm going to put two of the short bolts in, that would be these, with some Loctite, and then uh, go ahead and put the third one in, tighten them up, put this cover back on, and then I'm pretty much done under here. Then the rest of it is uh, putting the bolts in for the water pump. There's two of them, and then there's uh, reattaching the thermostat housing up top. I'm using this magnet to help get these screws in. If you drop one down there, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And that, folks, is where I end this video. Turns out I did drop a screw, a fastener, down into the timing cover well. And uh, means I had to go get it. Couldn't reach it with a magnet, so that means I had to take the crank pulley off which I discovered this somebody installed the crank pulley wrong it's not supposed to have two of these keyways so somebody put it on in the wrong position where this one wasn't lined up and just cranked it down with an impact wrench uh, when tightening the bolt and ended up just destroying it so I had to deal with that issue and then once I got the timing cover off I realized there was a broken uh, chain guide laying in the bottom of it and it turns out it was for the water pump chain so I stopped the video in the interest of time and uh, replaced this I put the other um, crank pulley on from this engine which is the original engine and then proceeded to finish the job and got it running the thing runs fine it's out on the street and then uh, just got it done on to the next project so if you want to try this at home I recommend you get some help by somebody if you're not a hundred percent sure that can uh, deal with the issues that I came across like the novice wouldn't know about this, the novice wouldn't know that uh, you gotta pull the timing chain cover, you have to uh, make sure you don't drop the bolts in there. So this is a high on the difficulty scale, so I would be very careful before trying this project as a DIY. So don't forget to check out my other videos, hit that subscribe button, if I can do it, can't necessarily do it.